This is Doug Beardsley, Director of Engineering at Cadena. Today I'd like to show you how you can use our recent collaboration with Tendermint to create hybrid blockchain applications that interoperate with the Cadena public blockchain and the Cosmos ecosystem. The Cadena Mint page is shown here, and you can see it is a GitHub repository that is publicly available under the Cadena IO organization slash Cadena Mint. To demo this, I'm going to use a hybrid demo. This hybrid demo has three places where value can reside. On the left, we have the Cadena public blockchain. In this case, it is coins on our testnet. In the middle, we have a stablecoin smart contract that is installed on the Cadena blockchain. And then we have a stablecoin integration that is handled by a middleware layer in between these two that we call SCX Instant Pay that represents coins on a Tendermint blockchain. To use this, first we put in an account name. And when we refresh the balance, we see that this account has 100 coins on the Cadena public blockchain. To get started, we want to buy some stable coins. So we put in an amount and we click buy. When we click that, the DAP sends a message to the Chainweaver wallet running locally on our computer, asking it to sign the transaction. To do that, we have to choose an account and we have to define what keys we want to use to pay for gas and to approve this transfer. When we click next, the transaction gets submitted. We can see this transaction come in by looking at our block explorer, which is running on testnet. It might have come in in this block right here. So let's go back and refresh just to see. So we have 100 coins. Nope, it didn't come in in that block yet. So let's go back. The Cadena public network is a braided network, which has 10 chains that are independent, but they're, but they're braided together. Blocks can come in on each chain at any time. And as we can see here, a block with the transaction we just submitted just came in on chain zero. Now, if we go back and refresh our balance, we see that the 20 coins got deducted here on the public network, and they're now in the smart contract as our stable coin. From here, we can transfer from the stable coin over to the Tendermint network. If we put in 10 coins to transfer, the same transaction happens where it asks the wallet to sign. We put in, this is a slightly different transaction, but we still have to put in the same gas information. We can see this looks like the response that we expect. So we submit it, go back to the block explorer, and wait for it to come in. The 10 chains in Cadena's network is what allows us to actually scale proof of work for the first time. Each chain can proceed independently and allows us to uh, not be limited by the number of transactions in, that can fit in one block. We can see that this transaction just came in. And then over on the left, we just saw some activity. This is where I'm running Tendermint locally on my computer. And the middleware layer that is sitting here in between the two saw the transaction on Cadena and then put in the appropriate transaction on the Tendermint network. Now, if we refresh our balance, we can see that 10 coins moved from here over to the Tendermint network. Next, we want to be able to send coins on this network to another account. So we want to look up a different account, Bob. Bob has already been using these, these networks and has 33 coins on the Tendermint network. So if we go back to Alice, Alice has 10 and let's say wants to transfer to Bob two coins. We hit transfer. One thing is, is not quite right. This is set for testnet. So we actually need to cancel this transaction. Go back to the wallet and change this to Cadena Mint. 
Now we're looking at the Kadenamit network. It doesn't know about these accounts because these aren't coin contract accounts. These are in the SCX instant pay contract. We can see that contract if we go to the contracts tab, go to our module explorer, and we see there's a contract called hybrid token. If we hit view, and open, we can see all of that contracts code right here, and we can see a nice summary of the functions that are available here. Now that we've set this to the Canadian network, this transaction will work. Alice sending Bob two coins. We don't need to worry about a sender in this case because there is no gas. Tendermint is a BFT fast finality blockchain and we don't need gas, but we do have to sign for this transfer capability. This is Alice, so we use Alice's key. We hit next. No valid gas payer, that's okay because we don't need gas on this network. When we submit this, it's fast finality, so the results show up instantly. Now we can see that Alice's balance has been deducted to eight. And if we look at Bob's balance, we can see that it's up to 35. Now, Bob wants to transfer some of these coins back. So if we put in 15 and do this transfer, same thing, we don't need gas. We need Bob's key on this capability. We hit submit. As we could see on the left, the transaction came in on the Tendermint network. And now the middleware is duplicating that transaction on the public blockchain in the stablecoin contract. We can see that it, the coins already got deducted from Kadenament. And if we come back to the block explorer, when the next block comes in, this will be a transaction interacting with the stablecoin contract on the public network. And as soon as we see it show up in chain zero, the balance will be there. There it is. If we go back, we had 30 coins, we refreshed the balance, we had transferred 15, and now we're up to 45. If we want to, we could go one step further and then transfer these out of the stablecoin back into the native KDA currency, but we don't need to do that right now. It's very similar to the transaction that we did moving it over. Now, how can this be used? Well, a number of people are familiar with stablecoins, this, this middle layer. Uh, if it's pegged to fiat currency, this will be a currency that is much more desirable by businesses for transactions. Restaurants, grocery stores, most of those entities don't want to be exposed to the volatility of many of the cryptocurrencies, and so transacting in a stable coin is a really desirable thing. So you could use this kind of balance transfer token to do transactions with, say, a restaurant where you want to buy some food, but um, if it's a sit-down restaurant, you don't need need really, really fast transactions, you can afford to wait a couple of minutes while a public blockchain transaction goes through. But where you can't use this is places like coffee shops, grocery stores, where even a couple of minutes delay is too much. That's where the Kadenament blockchain running on Tendermint with fast finality comes in. You can do these, these value transfers very quickly. We see Bob has 20. Um, if Bob wants to send, you know, eight back to Alice, it goes very quickly. We transfer, we sign with the appropriate key, we submit, the transaction comes through very quickly. We refresh the balance again, it's done. If we look at Alice, Alice had 16 coins, eight more than the eight that we had previously. Thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting and I look forward to seeing what the community can do with these new tools.